morning, everyone, or good morning, good afternoon, shalom. This is Chief Yuya, and um, I just wanted to share something real quick. You know, once in a while, I'll share like uh, little clippings and things like that. I don't do it too often, but sometimes things need to be spoken on, things, you know, come out or whatever. And I came across a, a clipping that I thought was... Um, that was worthwhile that was worth sharing and um i wanted to share it with you and then give maybe some perspective from where we're coming from you know from my community and the masculine consciousness of where we're at all right so let's watch it and we'll come right back maybe they need to discuss their own holiday it ain't no but my <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm going to start um, my comment with uh, reading from the book of Ezra, Ezra chapter 10. All right. And Ezra chapter 10. Now, when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And Shekinah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them 
according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. Then arose Ezra and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word, and they swear. Then when Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of Yohanan, the son of Elishabib, when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation throughout Yehuda and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity that they should gather themselves together into Jerusalem, and that whosoever should not come within three days according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substances should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that have been carried away. I'm just going to pause right there, right? So, you know, we're living in times now where a lot of us are making bad contracts. And um, I understand that when you get sound bites or video bites online, you don't really, you don't necessarily get context, you know, so you're supposed to have a certain sort of um, reaction, you know, based on what you're seeing. And, you know, we all do that. Those of us who create content, you know, especially like in our titles, they call it uh, clickbait. You know, we might use a certain title that is, is related to what we're talking about, but it may be the most provocative um, sort of idea to get a person to to tune in, you know, and then maybe hear what, you know, what the thing is about. So I do understand that uh, context is important. And also a lot of times online things are staged, especially with this young man and his mother. I know for years uh, she has uh, utilized him uh, in a way where they could probably, I'm sure they're both eating from it but where they can uh, achieve some level of social media notoriety. And I'm sure they, they have uh, been able to achieve more revenue as a result, right? So anything is possible. However, this video was taken down, <laughs> you know, so it seems to be more of a candid moment that maybe backfired. And you can see from all the laughing and the giggling that um, the pain of, of young men is always funny to a wicked person you know that's just what it is you know when uh young men are are molested when they're attacked when they're sexually abused there's all sorts of jokes that are made out of it you know when men go through divorces and they're financially devastated as a result of the divorce people cheer uh when people when men who dedicate their their careers to awakening the minds of other men who have been taken advantage of and females who could achieve more and have been tricked into underachieving, when they die, there's a whole bunch of cheering that goes on too. I mean, only a true, truly evil person would respond in that way with any of those situations, of course. So um, you see the, the, there's a young man who's saying, listen, something's not right here. Um, you're basically trying to erase my patriarchal line and I'm not comfortable with that. And um, I know now patriarchy is like, it's, it's almost a profane word, although matriarchy isn't. Matriarchy is still fine, it's still safe to say it, but if you say patriarchy or patriarchal or traditional patriarchy, all of a sudden people become very triggered. It's like using the term uh, normative heterosexuality, you know, or, or heteronormative that's like a curse word now, <laughs> you know? So it's important to understand um, where you are. And I, and I felt that that particular scripture was like a great entrance into, you know, when I watched the clip, it was a great entrance into some of the things that we need to talk about. And I, and I shared some things with the scripture before, but I never really went deep into it. And I'm not gonna go too deep now. Uh, actually this evening on Enlightenment and Transformation, I'll be doing the fifth part of the 2001 Space Odyssey breakdown, uh, we will be looking at uh, Dark Side of the Moon, right? So I'm not gonna spend too much time with this um, because I'll be right back on anyway, but 
I felt, you know, I wanted to share something today. One of the things I wanted to start with was just kind of how that started, just to get some context to that chapter in Ezra, where it starts with now, while Ezra was praying and making confession, weeping and prostrating himself before the house of God, very large assembly, men, women, and children gathered to him from Yisrael for the people wept bitterly. You see his sincerity in him and him looking at like, wow, we've gone so far from where we're supposed to be and who we're supposed to be. His sincerity of really being um, distraught about that, it actually transferred to the people who were around him. Because what you see is there, it says that they were men, women, and children. Typically, if it was any sort of, um, we'll say religious um, teaching that was going on, there would only be young men and men there, young men being those 13 and older and men. But women typically did not um, congregate where there was teaching going on because they were to be taught at home by their heads or by their covering. So the fact that it mentions that there were men, women and children there was a sign of a couple of things, one of which it was a sign of the transgression. You know, so when you're in a fallen state, your laws are gone, <laughs> you know? So yeah, at one point we were, we're supposed to be teaching in a way where it's the men teaching the men and then those men go back home and, you know, share what they learn and transfer that throughout their compound or throughout their household, their kingdom, whatever. Uh, but when you're in a fallen state, everyone's just out. The children are here, the, the, the women are here, everyone's here. There's no sort of decorum even in, in the places of learning, you know, or the places of weeping, because he was weeping and mourning and he was praying. So it gave, it gave you an idea of his mind state and what he was going through at the time. And like I said, how people saw him was like, wow, yeah, well, look at us. We're, we're supposed to be the spiritual nucleus of the planet. And we, we've lost it. You know, we've lost our tradition because, um, you know, when he speaks about putting away the foreign wives, which is which is part of the key thing here, you know, it, we're talking about contracts that we make, you know, so those women and those children may have been out because, you know, they were um, they were not following the law. So, you know, once you start to take on the customs and the mores of a foreign and alien people to your culture, anything is liable to happen. Right. You know, so when he says, um, now, therefore, make confessions unto the Lord of your fathers. See, that's that's critical. Like, what did your ancestors practice? Because you've gone so far from who and what you are that you you practice in this aliens propagandic uh, tradition, uh, which is really just put here to confuse you. But what did your ancestors sustain themselves by? So by saying, you know, um, now therefore make confession unto the Lord God, uh, God of your fathers, and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. So strange wives, what he's saying is that you've married yourself to consorts, to partners and to mates who have taken you into, into strange waters. They've taken you out into the desert and far away from your ancestral traditions and your ancestral power, your ancestral strength, to the point that now you're prostrate and you done fell down on the ground and you're, you're crying and you're sobbing and you're weeping because of your, your disconnect from your soul and your spirit. Like you can feel that, that disconnect there, you know? So I know that's a rough thing a lot of times to men. I've said it before, I've said it on, on live shows where you've heard me advisement sometimes you got to go start a new family you know and it, it may sound like a very simple statement but i know it's not i know it it's a very frightening thing to consider it's you know um it, it can be horrifying to think about the collateral damage i've made this child or i've made these children i've established a vision with this woman but she's not interested in my divine covenant she's not interested and patriarchal authority or the authority that was given to me by divine right through my spiritual bloodline. In fact, she has expressed open rebellion against it. She's completely at war 
with my masculinity. She's completely at war with masculine authority. But my babies. <laughs> and we love our babies. You know, that's part of the uh, trick again that's utilized. You know, um, I remember when one of my patriarchs passed away not, not too long ago. And um, after the transitioning, someone had asked me for something, like literally the day after. And I said, you know, didn't I just tell you this happened? Like, I'm, I got other things going on. And she said, oh, I didn't know you were affected. You know, <laughs> because that's a, that, that was, a, I guess, a fair enough question when you're living in a society that's so warped in it and, and that's so vehemently um, at war with masculine energy to say like, oh, a patriarch passed away, but so what? It's not like, it's not like one of the mothers transition, you know, it's just a, it's just a man, you know? So I thought it was, it was very interesting um, in looking at the video clip and looking at where we've come and some of the hard decisions that may be in front of us that probably a lot of us just don't want to make, you know, and those decisions probably revolve around, I got to go get a new family because my legacy has been decimated because I chose the wrong partner. So now as a result, and I'm especially speaking to men who have the potential to regenerate many years after maybe they, they, they have established their first family. You know, maybe you tried in your 20s or in your 30s even, and um, you married yourself to a foreign woman who brought you into, into strange customs because of her allegiance to the Willie Lynch agenda. And now you've, it, it's collapsed in your 40s. And now you're in your 40s or your 50s and you're like, oh man, I just, I threw my life away. I, you know, cause men think in terms of investment. So you might be thinking, man, I've invested 10 years, 20 years, 11 years, 15 years, whatever your number. And I could have been doing something else with that time. And a lot of times, you, you know, men forget that Within two, three years, everything can turn around. <laughs> two, three years, you know, everything can, can turn around. Uh, if you're resolute on maintaining your pact with the Creator, as it speaks about in Ezra 10, when they said, wow, look at what we did. And specifically speaking to the Yehudites and the, and the tribe of Ben Amin, and saying, let us go back to Jerusalem. Let us go back to Jerusalem as a city of peace. Let us go back to the city of peace, and peace is where you reestablish your identity. That's what peace is, the establishment and the, the maintaining of identity. Let us go back and make sure that we remember and know who we are, rediscover the ways of our ancestors. And one of the important things that he says here, he says, let us make a covenant. Now, the reason that I tell you that's important, because a lot of times we... If, if, if they already had a covenant, you wouldn't be able to say, let us make a covenant because you already have a covenant. So to say, let us make a covenant, covenant is an acknowledge that what I have done up until this point has not been legitimate. You know, a lot of times, again, when we get into these foreign customs and these strange religions and these strange ways, we don't really make covenants based on our own ethnic intelligence and our own traditional or more so ancestral mores. We don't make our covenants based upon that. You know, we might go down to the courthouse and sign a piece of paper and, and pay $135 and then be told, okay, now you're allowed to do this particular thing, right? Let me turn my notifications off. Um, but that's not necessarily how we maybe Tra traditionally or historically would establish a covenant when typically covenants are established through blood anyway, right? So with that being said, when he says, let us make a covenant, it gives us some clue as to even our level of obligation um, to a relationship or a contract that was not made under the covenant of our presiding deity and the deity of our fathers. So that's why there's that acknowledgement of my Lord, you know, he's saying, my Lord, my master, let us do this thing and let us do this thing under our God. Right. 
because you would have said because it almost seems like what well, he just said my lord twice he wasn't speaking to, he when he said when he said my lord he's speaking to the, the person then he says our god so he was like we didn't make a covenant before the things that we did this mar these marriages we got into you know because we were chasing after exotic ways or lust or whatever how we forsake or you know um we forsook the the women of, of our own nation our own kinswomen and our own ways so forth and so on um and maybe there were no kinswomen so we should have taken those foreign women and converted them to our ways but now because that didn't happen we have to put them away and not only do we have to put them away we have to put the children away you see I know so many men who go through years and years of pain because they can't admit that the children are not theirs. You may have created them, but who made them? And that's a hard thing to come to. And I, I, I understand. I know it is. You know, sometimes uh, it's hard to imagine that your child could be your enemy and wants nothing but harm and destruction for you because of what they were trained into. And as a man, you have to step away, recognizing this very important thing. A child having a relationship with you, if you are a righteous, conscious man who is moving with higher awareness, if you have empathy, if you have consideration, if you have relevant knowledge, if you have leadership capability, you know, if you're aware of how things move in the world, you understand um, diverse concepts and different ways of looking at things and different kind of values. If you have all those things, you don't have to chase your children down. They should be chasing you down. But we get locked into this, this, this Babylonian idea where a father is always a nuisance after a split. So I, I, I got to do whatever I got to do to be in my child's life. No, they should be doing whatever they can do to be in your life. And I know you might say, but they're just babies. They don't know that. The mother is teaching this. The mother is teaching them that. You're right. You're right. That's the sad part, because a lot of these women out here never even give the children a chance. They're, they're destroyed. They're ruined. They never give them a chance because of a point that they're trying to make, <laughs> because of a point they're trying to prove or an allegiance that they're trying to show to a satanic system. You see, and what has to happen, like what you see in Ezra, where he said, get rid of everybody. Get rid of the women, get rid of the children. And let's create a real covenant. So a lot of times we, th we think about some of the relationships and marriages that we had. If they were not done under the covenant of you being a born again person walking in the truth, they're not valid anyway. I want you to consider that those of you who have divorced before. Under what covenant did you divorce? You see, was it the old covenant or was it the new covenant? You know, and was the old covenant a valid one or was it never real to begin with? You know, so, yeah, I just thought it was a, it was kind of an important thing in understanding that the faculty of mind that Ezra sort of represents is that reminder of his faculty is kind of like the reminder of truth that exists within our psyche. You know, um, that reminder that there is a way of remembrance. So when he's he's praying and he's, you know, which is a sign of humility, when he's praying and he's humbling himself, you know, and he's prostrating, um, he's he's humbling himself down and remembering. You see that 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 power to remember. So even when they say, OK, get up, there's that part later in the scripture, he says, get up. Let's go. Let's go into action now. We're not going to spend the rest of our lives on the ground crying and weeping because somebody alienated us from our children. We're not going to do that. Or because we were married to someone and in the divorce, they took our house or they took our car or they they ruined our reputation or they turned our friends against us. We're not going to cry and, and pray about that and weep and mourn forever. That's why he took no food and no drink because he was mourning over the transgression. Man, we've gone so far. I have to mourn like it's a death because my my highest divine self died in all of this. Okay, we did that for a little while, but then he says, get up. Now let's go to Jerusalem. Gather the people together 
We're going to put these women away. And he said, let's do it lawfully. Because we, we, we need a couple of days to do this thing the right way. And whoever doesn't show up, take all their things. Let's take their inheritance. So even in that, there's got to be an understanding. You know, you may watch this and listen and then say, I'm going to share this with my brother who's going through this. And maybe you're going through it, have gone through it. And your brother's like, yeah, but my babies. Okay, leave them. Because the inheritance that was for them, you go take now. So that's what they were saying. Like, we're not even going to spend um, an excessive amount of time trying to convince you that this is what we need to go do. We're going to go do it, period. You know, and this is what needs it done. And we're going to establish a covenant. We're going to establish this vow, this covenant that we are going to, to rebuild the temple. The temple is the head. We're going to rebuild the temple, the thinking, the mind structure of Yehuda, of Israel, you see. And there may be people of our own kind, our own kinsmen and kinswomen who don't come in three days. All right. Have fun in Babylon. <laughs> you know, but we have to go do this thing, you know. So it's, it's important always to... Uh, Remember where you're from, obviously. Remember your potential and your, your, your capacity to return to where you're supposed to be or to move forward with the plan, you know, and, and to always have that Ezra energy functioning within your mind. The Ezra energy is like the purity of the soul. You know, you may do this and do that. You do so many wrong things, quote unquote, but there's a part of you that always maybe feels guilty. I was like, man, I need to get back on to what I was doing, man. I was doing so good before um, this hope that I could return to who I was and, and what I was supposed to be. And I want to capitalize on that hope and that potential. That's the Ezra principle that exists inside of everyone's psyche. You know, uh, when we go so far out, you know, we ego trip so far, our luggage gets lost and everything. We we can't even figure out. we. We go to the, the train station or the bus station. We don't even know what ticket to buy. We've been ego tripping so long. We don't even know which what where our home is. Where are you going, sir? I have no idea. I've been ego tripping for years. I forgot where I live. Well, how about how about you go to the city of peace, Jerusalem, because there you can reclaim your identity, and that may require a sacrifice. There's always a sacrifice when you leave Babylon. Every single time. Every time you're going to sacrifice something. And for some, the sacrifice may be your child or your children. And at some point, you may have to admit, you know what? The math does not justify what I'm doing here. These children are being raised to disrespect me. They're being raised to hate me. They're being raised to undermine me. They're being raised to be New World Order soldiers. And I'm putting all of my energy and effort into this and arguing with some foreign person when I could take that energy that's stored up in me and create a new dynasty. And some may look at that who don't know your culture and may look at it and say, oh, but you know, come on, you know, you love your babies and it, you don't understand. This ain't about love. And you can only love someone for so long who doesn't love you back. And just because a person came from your flesh and is flesh of your flesh doesn't mean that you are spirit of the same ilk. Flesh is just flesh, you, you see. But are you connecting on that higher spiritual frequency? Yeah, we may look alike, we may talk alike, we may even act alike a little bit. But do we spiritize the same? Is our spirit striving for the same place, the place that I tried to, to give you? Remember, the father holds the key to spirit. The mother holds the key to soul. But the spirit is the movement. It's a direction. So if I've, if I've implanted that spirit in that direction in my offspring and they decide, well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go over here. And But where they're going takes them into unrighteousness and total disregard for me as a father and as the, the paternal authority. I don't I shouldn't necessarily still feel obligated to them because they are no longer mine. They are no longer my possession at that point. They are possessed by something else. 
you see and that may mean I have to go find a woman who is excited and willing to bring forth uh, more citizens and more members in the kingdom of the Most High and to do it with me and to replicate what it is that I am and what I bring and be a vessel for me it says you know what your light is brilliant and that's the light I want in me because whatever comes out of you is clearly messianic. And I want to give birth to the Christ. So, come on. <laughs> she may not say it like that, but you, I think you get you get my point. Um, being able to express a spiritual consciousness that brings us back into the law of being is one of the most important things in all of this. You know, and there's certain times when we get out of being because our doing is so foul and so sinful that um, we forget what we're supposed to be. You know, in Ezra, that, that whole 10th chapter is a reminder, and again, of the sacrifices that may come with it. Um, so like I said, you see that clip and you see just the laughing and the giggling, you know, and the deflections, even to a degree. And I'm sure many people will look at it and laugh, but you've heard me say plenty of times, a lot of the things that we think are funny are not really funny. And like I, you also heard me say, the greatest con always comes with a smile. Young boy is being conned out of his authority. How can you have spiritual authority without the father? You cannot. You see, so then when you're going through your life and you wonder why nothing is happening for you, or you're unable to motivate anything as a man, then you might make another decision. Well, maybe being a man isn't, isn't all that great. Because I have no authority as a man. I have no ability to affect my reality as a man. Let me try something else. And see, that within itself is an identity crisis. You see, so that's why you have to go back to Jerusalem to gain identity again. Because when you suffer an identity crisis, you'll seek to identify with anything that seems um, like it will facilitate your navigation through the world better than what you currently are you know i always struggled with this but when i did this everything just seemed to fall in place <laughs> you see so i just wanted to share that you know and, and willfully you can all think about um i mean obviously read read that chapter you know go into the book of nehemiah where it goes deeper into um ezra's positioning in ezra's place um but, you know, just think about, and this is, I said, mainly for the men, you know, and for the women, if you get something too, but sometimes you got to put them away. And I know it hurts. And it's a pain that you'll carry for a very long time. Thinking about, man, I, I had to put my son away. I had to put my daughter away. They're no longer my son or my daughter. They, they just want to see me dead. They want to kill me. And I got to step away from this. And fortunately, the Most High gave me a certain potential. And that potential is that at 60 years old, I can still make babies. And if I'm strong and my system is clean and I have sense, at 60 years old, I can attract women who still have the potential to bring forth children. Regardless of what anyone says. Oh, she's too young for you. Right, that's the devil talking. <laughs> If you have um, great intelligence that's within your blood and royalty within your blood, we need as many of you on the planet as possible. Don't listen to what anybody else has to say. You just make sure that you can govern your family and your children and your women under right ruling. Because if you can't govern them under your right ruling, they're not worth having. They're not worth having. If you cannot govern your children under your right ruling as dictated by the laws of the creator of your fathers and the God of the Yah of your fathers it's not even worth having the children you're raising them for the new world order you're not even raising them for yourself you're raising them to pass them right over to the new world order why do you think all the new shows have this this consistent theme whether you look at um was it 4400 you look at the 100 um tribes of Europa um, the Tribe, uh, Riot Girls, there's a bunch of them, right? I could just go on, there's a lot of them. You have this consistent theme, even the old shows like Logan's Run, right? 
where adults don't exist. There's some disease that comes along and wipes out all the adult population. And the only thing left is young people or, or just people under the age of 20. I think the dome was similar to that as well. You know, it's all like children of the corn, you know. There's a message that's being put forth. <laughs> you know, we have to get rid of this old regime of men like me and women who understand and appreciate men like me. <laughs> you know, we got to get those people out of here and we'll start this new regime of fully chemicalized children under these orders here. This is this is what you're here to do under this 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 new set of orders. You see, and unfortunately, sometimes based on who you choose to co-create with, you may end up being a part of that scheme. And you look at your child one day and like, I, I have nothing in common with this person. Nothing. This person wants nothing that I want. This person has no respect for me. This person has no honor for me. Nothing. You know, it's like the movies. They're just always they That's why they always show that in movies, you know. Teenagers are just always rolling their eyes and what mom and dad children aren't really like that. Come on in real life But they're they're precipitating something they're trying to create some no no child could be that disrespectful to their to their parent consistently Not children of my community and my ethnic group Right, but eventually it does become acceptable because you know children put themselves at the center of the media experience and when you're constantly put into this position where you're subject to the curse and part of the curse was women and children shall rule over you so you're seeing that fulfilled you see so in this particular book as of ezra they're saying let's get let's get from under this cursed state let's go back to the yah of our fathers let's go back to jerusalem because we have been existing within a state of the curse we're, right now, you know, I'm here weeping and, and everything and there's children and women watching and we and they shouldn't even be here. It should only be the men because everything is topsy turvy and broken. You see, so you draw your, your own conclusions. Right. Um, but willfully, you'll take right action like Shekinah and, and all the, the other individuals, you know, spoke to Ezra about. Get up. Let's go. This is what we need to do. Thank you for sounding the alarm. Thank you. Now we see, yeah, we are messed up. Let's get on top of it. All right. So I just will that you all use that <laughs> and, and get on top of what you're supposed to get on top of. Um, and, you know, like I said in a recent, um, I think it was a podcast that a lot of the language and a lot of the agenda for us right now and I knew is the creation of family, is the joining of families. If, like I said, if you don't have a family, come on, we'll be your family. But being out here and coercing our spirits into intermingling with foreign and strange people just for the sake of not being alone has created such a, a huge um, battlefield of carnage that, like I said, we may not even be able to find our way home at the end of all this. And we might just have to be the ones who are put away, you see, because we, we didn't evolve with the righteous cycle of evolution. We're devolving with the world's agenda, you know, with, with society's schema to eradicate the, um, the chosen and the culture of the chosen, the language of the chosen, the attire of the chosen, you know, the family customs and mores of the chosen. That's what these projects are about, you know, whether it be the, the music pieces and all on this is part one. There's more coming, you know, for those who've been streaming and listening. Um, there's also the book coming, the class is coming. Getting back down to the basics. How do we love each other again? You know, that love that you hear in those old songs that we, we used to listen to, you know. How is it they were able to sing songs like that with such passion and conviction? You know, when you listen to old Curtis Mayfield and, you know, um, New Birth, you know, and, and um, Mother's Best. And all of these different groups, the Delphonics you know, the Manhattans and the way that they would they would express this this sentiment and this affection towards their men or towards their women. You know, what what sciences were they were they working with at that time? 
you know, how far away were they from Jerusalem or how close were they from Jerusalem uh, where they were more clear about their identity and how they chose to um, affect their dynamic relationship with their complementary counterpart. And what did that produce? You know, think about the meccas that those ideas produce. Even poems like Langston Hughes, Harlem Honeys. You know, it's poems like that, you know, the, the poem, the arts and, and things like that, that came about that expressed all of this great admiration and adoration that's been um, lost because of our commingling with these foreign spouses. All right. So this is Chief You. I just wanted to share that. And um, I actually be back on by another hour <laughs> for the uh, breakdown on enlightenment and transformation. Willfully, I'll see you over there. All right. So everyone, if not, you know, enjoy your evening. But if so, I'll see you in a few. Peace.